All right, welcome back to Blue Collar Coder. So last week we looked at federated modules in Webpack 5, and I got a great question from Alexander in the comments about whether this enabled the kind of cross-platform technology requirement of micro front-end frameworks, right? The ability to use React on the same page as Vue, for example. And the short answer is no, it doesn't. But then I got to think about it and I was like, hmm, you know, maybe I could use single spa for this on top of federated modules. And so I dusted off uh, some old code. And today we're going to redo this application. And it's an e-commerce app. It's got a header and a footer, and they're both implemented in React. It has a fruit selector. That's kind of new. It used to be dogs, but now it's fruit. And that's implemented in vanilla JS. And over on the side is a buy tools that's implemented in Svelte. And they all talk together through a shared store. So that's really pretty cool. Now, before we get into the code, I want to take a quick step back and talk about the architecture of this and kind of contextualize it a little bit. So let's talk about a web app. Standard web app is going to have a bunch of libraries, React, React DOM, whatever. On top of that, you're going to have a store, and then maybe on top of that, some React components. And in this case, you're going to have single spa. And what single spa is going to allow you to do is bring in code from other platforms in a micro FE approach. And let's just say that those are hosted on S3 as individual parcels. That's what they're called in single spa world. So let's dig into single spa a little bit. Now, single spa has two primary concerns. The first is you got to get the JavaScript onto the page, right? And so what we use generally there by convention is system.js to do that loading. And then once it's on the page, that's when the single spa really takes over and does the orchestration. So now those React and Vue and Svelte components are all talking the same lifecycle methods. And so single spa is doing all that management of getting those onto the page and getting them to work correctly. So what if we take that system JS and replace it with federated modules? Now we can move the code for those parcels back into the application itself, where it's a lot easier to maintain, but still share it between applications, which is really cool. So what we're going to do now is take a tour of the code and just get right into it. So this is the code for that e-commerce page. It's a Yarn workspace-based system that has five different applications in it, and those are located in packages. From the top, you've got Buy Tools, and that's a Svelte app. Home is then where everything ends up kind of landing at the end. Nav is the React-based header and footer. Product Images is where the vanilla JS-based fruit grid is, and the store is that shared store. Over in Home, we see it bringing in all the remotes for the other applications. This is how you set up federated modules on the client side. And then we bring in Material UI CSS. And down in the body, we have the tags where Single Spa is going to mount all of our apps. So how do we set that up? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's over here over an index where you bring in the register application and start from Single Spa and then set them up using imports. Okay, now this is where the difference is. Now, normally, we would just use system.js and system.import. But because we have federated modules, we can just use regular imports here. And then Webpack does all the work of getting that code into the app. Now over in the Webpack config, we can see the federated modules set up with the callouts for the different remotes that we'll be consuming. Nav for the header footer. Product image for the fruit grid. And buy tools for the Svelte buy tools. So let's take an example component, say the footer, and see how that's set up. We have a normal React component right here at the top, but you can also see us bringing in single spa React. And we'll use that to wrap this component as a single spa parcel. It takes React, React DOM, and the component, and it gives us back a bunch of lifecycle methods that we can then export. Same kind of thing over here in Svelte land. We bring in the single spa Svelte and our component, and then we wrap it 
and export those lifecycle methods, and then that's all there is to it. We have apps that wrap components as parcels, and then we have federated modules to share them with the homepage. And they can be reused with any app that uses Webpack, federated modules, and single spa. All right, so now we got the lay of the land in this pretty complex project. So let's go and do a little bit of implementation. So I've walked the project back in time, and we don't have that fruit grid yet, so let's go build that. Here is the JavaScript parcel so far. It just uses the single spa HTML library to create a new parcel with the template at this point. But we do have access to home for the list of the fruit and store for the store. So you can see these connections between these apps are actually bi-directional, which is really cool. So let's bring in fruit from home and then remove that hello and check that out. That looks good. Okay, so we could just add fruit in the template, but I need to know when the component is loaded on the page so that I can set up the event handlers. To do that, I'm gonna hook the mount method and then call the original. And then create the HTML at this point. I'm putting the index in there because we'll need to use that with the event listener that we'll add later. And then I'll set the inner HTML to all that HTML. All right, that looks good, but it's kind of big. So let's go and create a grid to constrain that down a little bit. All right, looking sweet, literally. It makes me want some fruit. All right, now we got our fruit selector going. The next thing we want to do is get everybody talking to the store. So picking up where we left off, let's bring in the store and then create an event handler for the click on the images. Then we will set the image index in the store to the number that we get back on the attribute. So this is our little store. It's got a cart count and an image index, plus a list of subscribers that'll get notified when things change. You could use whatever you want for this, Redux, MobX, what have you. I'm just trying to keep it simple here. So I add some console code to make sure that we're getting called. Let's try this out a little. And it looks good. Time to go and update our buy tools svelte code to look for that image in the store. First thing to do is bring in that store and then set our local image index initially to the store image index and then subscribe to the store so that we get notifications when that image changes. Cool, looking pretty good. But the add to cart button doesn't work, so it should be changing the header. Let's go implement that button. Still doesn't work, but that's because the header isn't listening yet. So let's jump on over to the header code. And we'll bring in the store and the state and effect hooks so then we'll set that up so we get the initial cart count, but also subscribe, just like you hopefully will do to this channel. And finally, I'll drop the cart count value into the HTML. Let's take a look. All right, looks like the add to cart is working, as is everything else, and we are good to go. Of course, this is a pretty complex system, so be sure to download the code and try it for yourself. Just experiment a little on it and see how it works for you. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that project. It was a lot of fun, and I love the fact that it all stemmed from a question that was placed in the comments, and I think you should be inspired to ask questions in the comments, and maybe we'll do a video on your question. So I'm gonna take a quick personal uh, beat and talk about why I'm wearing this purple shirt. So I am a proud men mentor and parent on Pig Team 2733, representing Cleveland High School in Portland, Oregon. And I am super inspired by what they've done. They've built an amazing bot this year, spending three months of dedicated time to build this bot. And unfortunately, just three days ahead of their first competition, it was canceled and because of coronavirus. And while I understand the human tragedy that coronavirus is and that this pales in comparison to that, for these students and mentors and parents, this is also very devastating to see the work that they put into it and not be able to 
uh, get to the competition, and I know they would have kicked butt in that competition. Um, I am inspired and humbled to be part of that team. So uh, I just want to put that out there and encourage you guys to involve yourselves in STEM. What you uh, get back, uh, what you put in, you will get back tenfold. I, I, I truly believe that, and I, I've experienced that myself. So I heartily encourage you to engage with STEM, and in particular, women in STEM. Uh, all right, anyway, I'll get off my soapbox and uh, just say that if you like this video, please like it. If you are interested in these topics, you know, this channel, you can just subscribe and of course hit that bell button and then you'll get notifications about when new uh, videos are up. And of course, now more than ever, just be good to each other. And for my pig mice's, oink oink, squeak squeak. <laughs>